What's the crack lads? Welcome back to the channel and today we are going to be reviewing part one of the new manager pack, right? So we are going to get to Stoichkovic in a little bit, but first up we have De La Fuente. So these brand new managers, they're both available for 500 coins, they don't give you any players, they just give you 40,000 XP for training your, your players, and also a dual proficiency manager, which in this case we're going to be doing a review of De La Fuente, and also a little trick on how to set him up to absolute beast. Now a huge shout out as well to Lou Cola, one of my regulars on the stream for giving us the 1000 coins and donating to get two managers to test out. So first up, De La Fuente, right? He plays a dual team playstyle proficiency, which is probably going to take a little bit of getting used to if you're used to playing quick counter and long counter. But possession gaming out wide, they just basically are fun and they give you so much variety and so many options for with a sub tactic. We'll show you exactly how to set it up. We'll show you exactly what it does right here. 88 in player proficiency or the playstyle proficiency and also a plus one to his acceleration stat as well which isn't going to be game changing but it will help now as you can probably guess out wide is exactly what it says on the tin you need to be able to go out wide and and attack down the flanks right i'm not talking about dribbling into you know cul-de-sacs or into areas of the pitch where you can't damage your opponent or hurt your opponent it's all about getting the ball out wide and waiting for runners for then tap backs or, you know for cutbacks like that that is essentially what you need to do. Now, I kind of messed around with a couple of formations before we found this one where we went on an 8 or 9, I think it was about 8 or 9 win streak where we were just absolutely destroying people out wide. Obviously, it's going to depend on the strength of your team. We'll get into that in a second. But look at the options we have from the AI and also with manually controlling. So a lot of the time when you win the ball with, you know, a counter like this, you get the ball aggressively back and then it's all about just waiting for the AI to make runs for you. Lovely ball through here to Platini and we're going to finish that if we're good enough to finish that. If we don't, it's my mistake. Again, a little bit of isolation dribble on the wings and being comfortable in possession out wide. It does take a lot to actually get used to holding the ball out wide. But when you lose the ball out wide, it is slightly different to losing the ball in the middle of the pitch. Rewind this back a little bit here, right? And look at the possession that I'm going to keep here. Even if I lose the ball here with Carlos, I have a lot of players back and we haven't even used our sub tactic. I'll show you how to set that up in a second. You can see here when we analyze this just very roughly, you can see the positioning of my players. We've got our attacking midfielder, Hullet, pushed in. We've got Dennis Law making the run. And we've got a bit of options on the flank as well to get that little touch back. And we can kind of psych out our opponent who tries to foul us. And from here, yes, we've got lots of options in the box. We've got three men in there, including Nedved, who's pulled in from a right flank. And we've got Dennis Law and Hullet inside. But look at the left flank we're covered. We've got lots of options to recycle the ball back out. But it's a simple tap in there from Shevchenko, who's in for Dennis Law. And this is the setup, right? You want to be bombarding the wings while still maintaining that solid core, right? Especially if you're playing three at the back, I think this formation can be super, super good. Now, obviously, it does have some pros and cons, right? But I think the sub-tactic is really where you need to go with this. This is the individual instructions here. You can put defensive or anchoring on right card as your DMF or Zakaria or Rodri or Dennis or Dennis Rice, Declan Rice, um, any of those guys that you want to pick as an anchorman. Somebody that's defensive, that's going to be just a blocker. Winning the ball back is not their main role. It's more stopping the ball from even going through. Defensive also and deep line are used uh, are used very effectively with this formation because obviously we know that if you are playing with anything but long ball counter, your players are going to be super high up the pitch. Now we can go back into a very flat 4-2-1-3 here as well, which is still kind of meta in the game if you're playing out wide or you're playing a bit of possession. You need to be able to dominate possession and just hold the ball from your opponent until you're ready to strike like a Cobra, right? Now, if you're playing a 4-3-1-2 or a 4-2-1-3, you've got lots of options depending on the personnel that you're going to be using. Obviously, we've got a who's who on the bench and in our starting 11. You might have a weaker team, you might have a stronger team, and you might be able to adapt it as such. But this is a brand new setup that we have here with our sub tactic. And also on top of that, not just the players that we're going to be using, not just the switching of positioning, not just the different kind of attacks that we can throw at our opponent. We're also going to be playing possession play style with this. So we've got our solid core. We've got our back four. Carlos is attacking. Toram is defensive. The players don't really make a difference to this. Obviously, I've got a god squad. You probably have if you're playing the game a while. But the big trick comes here is that we're actually going to be playing a different team play style. We're going to be playing out wide as our main and then possession as our sub tactic. So we're going to be throwing different things, different runs. The AI is going to handle differently when we're switching between them. Now, a few people will ask and they continue to ask me, when do, they, when do you switch the sub tactic? 
I usually use one sub tactic when I have the ball and play in possession and attack with it. And then the other tactic I'm going to be using, uh, whether that's your main tactic or your sub tactic, which that you're going to activate by holding down in the D-pad, I'm going to use that when I'm defending. So I'm kind of defending a different way than I am attacking. You're not staying static, you're resetting your AI, you're resetting your player runs, you're resetting your defensive line and everything like that by you controlling it manually, okay? And you can see here how high up the pitch we are going to be with possession and then of course out wide as well. It is going to take a little bit of getting used to quick counter is still the highest obviously but it does take getting used to a little bit with possession game and out wide so that is the setup obviously it's all about holding the ball out wide being comfortable in possession but i have been absolutely beasting with de la fuente it does really suit my play style having the ball out wide if they fix crossing which i think they will and make wing play even more effective i think efootball 2025 could go this route let me know what you guys think Anything that they can do to change the meta at the moment to kind of freshen it up a bit for eFootball's first month or two, I definitely think they need to do it. This could be a sign of what's coming for eFootball 2025 with the out wide play, the wingers back in actually being able to cut in effectively and have tap backs and stuff. Let me know what you guys think and I'll touch in a bit. Don't forget to subscribe.